Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Tech Forum. We should have uh, Alessandro joining in a second. Uh, so welcome to the first Tech Forum of 2021. Welcome back, Alessandro. Welcome, everyone. I'm really happy today. Uh, Don, I'm, uh, I'm happy for two reasons. Well, it's New Year, 2021, so we've got uh, 2020 over. <laughs> And uh, it's a second, second tech forum, and uh, we've got a lot of really cool things to talk about today. No, absolutely, yeah, really, really exciting stuff today. Again, uh, hopefully, hopefully, we'll manage to cover everything uh, in in the hour. Uh, but uh, we have some really, cool, really cool guests uh, that I'm uh, I'm really happy to to be able to introduce you in a in a little bit. Uh, we have uh, Garrett and George, uh, who are two long term. Embed contributors will will join us, and we'll also have Vincent, who's the, the team lead for uh, connectivity uh, in in Embedos, will join us in a second as well. Awesome! And before I guess introducing the show, the, sorry, the guests, we should introduce um, the agenda. So we already have one. The first question, Peter DeWitt has uh, you know won the first question award here. <laughs> what is the what is on the agenda? So Don, why don't you give a bit of a an intro there? Yeah, so I think we, I, I guess I'll, there's going to be three main topics today. Uh, first, uh, we're going to talk quite a lot with uh, Garrett and George, and they'll, uh, they've actually built a lot of stuff around Embed. So we'll discuss with them how they came, well, first of all, what their background is, how they came across Embed, uh, and was something that they've built based on Embed. Um, we'll get into what worked for them, what didn't, uh, and uh, how they, they handled those shortcomings, like what they contributed back to Embed to uh, to improve the, the ecosystem. It's also some of the problems they were facing. Um, so I think we'll then get to a second part of that discussion where we'll uh, discuss a lot about uh, what, uh, what can be done around Embed in the future. And we'll bring Vincent into the discussion because uh, they, Vincent, Jordan, Garrett, uh, all like they've all worked a lot on Bluetooth, and uh, there's been some a lot of engagement recently around uh, some Bluetooth services. Uh, so Vincent will talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I think that Jordan has a cool demo uh, uh, around uh, something he's been working on in the Bluetooth space, and finally, I'll I'll have a few uh, short announcements in terms of. Uh, things we're doing to 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 work a little bit better with the the community. It sounds like we've got a lot to talk about. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to all the different topics. And actually, you know, you mentioned um, about uh, yeah having Garrett and Georgia. We'll bring in in a second. Um, and I think what's interesting is they've gone through kind of the whole fl the whole flow right of uh, looking for an operating system, uh, picking one, and then becoming eventually actually contributors to Embed. So you know, it's really cool to have them on the show. I'm really excited. Um, and I think actually, if I can get this, um, try to get, yeah, this off, <laughs> the comment off, I got it off now. <laughs> so if we can, um, yeah, I think it's, it's time to actually introduce everyone and, uh, we can get started. Uh, so That's let's good. bring everyone on Garrett, George and Vincent. Hello everyone. Welcome Hi, to guys. the show. Hello. Hello. So I think, um, you know, as usual, what we would li like for you guys to do is um, Garrett and George specifically to um, kind of introduce yourselves because Vincent is obviously, uh, you know, one of our special arm guests. He's, uh, he's the, the expert in, when it comes to Bluetooth. So uh, we'll have him talk about uh, that and, and obviously work, I mean, talk with uh, Garrett and George about what they've done as well. Um, so Garrett, do you want to get started with uh, your background? All right. Um, so my background is in electrical and computer engineering. Um, started out my career at a couple different small engineering design services companies, um, mainly working on firmware, uh, PCB design, of course, other cross-discipline type mechanical stuff, um, and lots and lots of different projects. Uh, eventually, a, a bunch in IoT, and um, ultimately um, came across Embed at, at one point. I think I was at uh, Freescale Technology Forum a couple couple years back and um, came across this Embed thing, saw the abstraction it was providing. And I had already had a history, I think, in 
in kind of Android development as well, in addition to firmware, and saw how it was kind of um, building that up. And really, it really resonated with me. And so eventually started using Embed, finally was able to get a customer to buy into um, using it in a product and and um, haven't really looked back since, still using it to today in, in professional products and projects. Awesome. Well, thank you for that uh, quick intro. We'll go back. We'll get back to to what you just said in a, in a minute because I'm I'm curious to know more about um, why you chose it. But uh, we'll get George to introduce himself first. Hi, George. Hey, can you guys hear me right? Yes. All right. So I'm George Beckstein. I work at Embedded Planet, which is an embed partner, and we have a couple products in the catalog. Um, I've been working with Embed since around early 2017. Some of you may know me on the on GitHub as a glass of milk. Don't ask. That's another story how I got that username. But um, so I started with embed development in early 2017. I kind of inherited a project. I was I started working for a startup, a small industrial wearable startup at the time, and their firmware engineer was on the way out, and he had just started um, moving from embed OS two to embed OS five. And he had a whole bunch of customizations to it, like custom linker scripts. And I come from an, uh, an electrical engineering background. So all of this was fairly new to me. Um, and it was great because I had no help <laughs> to figure it out. So I dove headfirst into Embed and its internal workings. And I've been using it ever since because it was, while I was alone um, getting started with Embed, it was very easy to get help from and interact with the developers on GitHub, which I thought was really unique and made it a lot of fun to actually work with Embed. So that's, I, I pretty much just inherited a project that used it and I liked it so much I've used it ever since, so. Cool. Uh, that's what we, we like to hear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th thanks, for the, thanks for the intro guys. Uh, I, I actually, like, I'm, not, I'm not sure if uh, folks on this channel know, but you guys have, I've, I've built something together in the past. Uh, it's called the Agora platform. Why, why don't you tell tell us a little bit more about what this is and and how how you came across how you came about building this? Gary, you're muted. <laughs> I think we can just start that start that discussion with. Um, uh, I'm a former em employee of Embedded Planet. Um, if you want to see who I work for now, you can find me on LinkedIn. But um, at a certain point um, in the design services grind, um, you start seeing these patterns over and over again, both in, of course, software, as you you know, the common design patterns, but also in hardware and in what the market is kind of looking for. Um, so we sort of came to this place of <clears throat> seeing more IoT products and projects and desire in the market. Um, and wanting to create something that could very quickly prototype in, in uh, I guess, a platform of sorts for electronics and um, ultimately settled on something called Agora. And I'll, I'll let George kind of describe what it is and maybe some of the spirit of it. Yeah, so Agora is the first pro project that I worked on at Embedded Planet when I came there. And it was, it's pretty much what Garrett said. It's a product that we developed for our own internal like proof, proof of concept development. And then we decided to release it as a full blown embed target that you can develop your own applications for. And it embeds a number of different connectivity um, options, including cellular, LoRa and Bluetooth. And we chose embed to run on this because it's so easy to just take existing code, for example, the block device code and adapt that to other new use cases and we just really like the workflow with embed where there's just so many libraries out there already and the official library support is growing every day so it also had a, a large portion of the um, wireless stacks that we wanted to integrate into the product um, that were and those stacks were actively developed and of, of high quality so did you did you get started on this um, because you had an actual kind of partner or um, customer that asked you for it, or was it more, uh, you know, a kind of an experiment, or you know, what brought you to build this? It started as a business ask, um, I guess, for a lower win endpoint, 
and um, ultimately evolved. It had kind of been brewing in my mind because I had, I had seen the NRF52840. It had already included 802.15.4 capability, Bluetooth, obviously, or BLE, I should say, um, NFC, um, all these different peripherals. Uh, it's easy to work with. It just was, to me, kind of a super chip because of really the, the cost was so much significantly lower than than other M4s uh, of its class. Um, so putting, I had the idea of putting that together with a LoRa chip, the SX1276, which is, um, of course, it has the standard sub gig sort of channels and also um, LoRa uh, modulation. And, and actually, it even has an 802.15.4G um, Mac in there as well. So, or Phi, I should say. So that's another little known fact. But putting those two together really covered a lot of what we were seeing in the market um, as desires from customers. So, you know, in the, I guess in the medical space when at hospitals, there's a, there's a ton of traffic in the 2.4 space. And we were looking for, um, some of our customers were looking for something that was more of a sub gig solution, which Laura could potentially fit the bill there. Um, and of course we were still getting plenty of customers who were buying into the, the, excellent marketing of BLE and, and really wanting to use BLE as their, um, their central wireless technology. Um, so we wanted to be able to, to take any customer in who, you know, maybe they thought they wanted one thing, but in reality, when we got into their environment, they needed let's say Laura or, or cellular or something else. It, we could, we could easily make that pivot and still sell them basically on, on this particular device. Whereas in the past that might've been a lost sale. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it all came together. Ultimately cellular was, I shouldn't say tacked on, but it, it was not initially in the vision, but someone said, Hey, we should do it. We can do it. The cost is coming down. We figured out how to, how to get it in there and how to get it through, um, PTCRB, et cetera. Um, and now it is what it is. And of course there's also, additional aspects to it from a DevX standpoint. And when I say DevX, I mean a dev user experience in a sense with uh, the fleet or board, which is meant to really even further uh, improve the rapid prototyping capability. And it has an onboard debugger. So you don't need to buy a J link for 500 bucks. And um, it's meant to be a platform for prototyping um, for professional prototyping, I guess. And that's, I guess the, the story of how it all came together. Yeah, and internally we use it as a vehicle for proof of concepts, but because Embed's APIs make it so easy to move between not only hardware, but different sensors and different memory chips and whatnot, we can reuse a lot of the same code we develop in proof of concept stages using the Agora platform and use it on say an STM32 chip or NXP or whatever, whatever microcontroller suits the requirements of that customer's application so to you you both mentioned like uh, Gary, you were talking about connectivity and george more about the underlying uh silicon running your application do, do you find that it's it's it was helpful or it's helpful for you to be able to you know even like almost delay like those some of these choices around which connectivity uh your which type of connectivity you're going to be using um because you need to go through the proof of concept phase during which you're going to learn actually what works what doesn't work and you want to be able to change quite easily uh based on what you learn is it is it what you've noticed i would say in the experience that i had before leaving embedded planet yes um it kind of the customer comes in you know then they're really hot to get to get moving on a project and to prove out their concept and um you know, we gather, we kind of use that prototyping phase also to, to, to gather uh, information on their requirements and, and being able to just use BLE right out of the gates for something because um, it was simple, uh, really allowed us to kind of prove that concept. And if, if down the line, you know, we realize, hey, they're better off using cellular based on their business model, et cetera, whatever, um, that, that requirement can be found and, and adapted to. Awesome. I'm I'm really curious to kind of go back a step and um, and talk a little bit about uh, a bit a bit more about embed um, and kind of your experience with embed right um, before we dive into 
some of some of the other things that um, you know some of the other things around Agora and, and Bluetooth. Um, you you said one thing earlier, Garrett. You mentioned that um, you know you came from um, an Android world. Uh, you used to develop in Java. You you told me previously. Um, so I'm curious. You know, like I guess you were probably shopping around a little bit for different operating systems um, that you could use in my controller world. And what what made you choose embed? Um, so, so I would say it, I um, started out doing bare metal type stuff, really. And I did have the experience. It was a research project in particular of developing an Android app. I worked with someone to develop an Android app uh, that controlled a remote control RC car via Bluetooth. Um, and that gave me the context of, hey, this is how things can be done from an um, object-oriented standpoint or an interfaces standpoint, basically how to do a larger scale software project. And that really kind of um, brought me from the place of I, you know, when I first started seeing, you know, either peers in school and I guess peers even in the professional world, having the single C source file um, of, of embedded code. And, and those are non-connected devices, because once you start getting connected, it's almost, it becomes spaghetti code. But Seeing that in industry really made a requirement of mine to to ensure that you know the developer experience for whatever I chose was going to be something that was like I guess sustainable um, and inflexible and abstracted the stuff that I didn't need to care about. Yes, I still need to dig into the data sheet and into the peripheral sets and the registers. Um, but when trying to do a proof of concept or for basic requirements of the project, using just the standard APIs, no matter what chip I've chosen, is really, to me, was the the main the main draw. the The fact that um, you could have a basic application, if the customer said, "Hey, that chip costs too much," um, and if I've already written parts of the application, all I do is I change targets, um, and with with some wiggle room, of course, it depends on how big the application is. You can literally just run that application on a different chipset from a different silicon vendor. Um, because each chip has its own requirements in the market. And, and do you feel like, um, you know, you're talking about this kind of shift between, um, you know, this kind of monolithical piece of uh, C code uh, that people used to use, uh, you know, maybe in, in back in the day uh, and, and what's, what's happening, what, you know, what you're experiencing now. And is this, do you feel like this is an increase of complexity because of IoT or do you feel like yes. there's other reasons why you know, this is the case? Absolutely, yes. Um, IoT has brought a significant amount of complexity and I think you see earlier in the days of IoT with a lot of the um, device management services and other services provided by the, the cloud vendors, you know, those services were very much oriented and still are to some extent today, oriented towards Cortex-A class processors. Um, and because there really wasn't any firmware out there for the for the lower cost devices, and that's really where IoT is going to be successful is large scale, thus meaning microcontrollers. And I guess in the early days, shouldn't really be saying that just yet. <laughs> I feel too young to say that. But um, in the early days, you know, you'd have to pull these stacks together. Um, LWIP, et cetera, and, and clutch something together and, and just trial, you know, troubleshoot and trial until things worked. Um, and it, even embed in, in the beginning was like that. It was, you know, more of a hobbyist uh, focused project, but over the past four or five years, um, you know, ARM has really, and, and you guys of course have really, and the community have really pushed it toward being actually viable for professional products in it within the last you know year and a half two years is really where um i think it's it's been the, the networking stacks are very you know they're stable they're they're well tested and they're they meet the requirements of the professional community and that's enabling iot at scale i think um it, in the in the past, I think that's really what's held IoT back and why it's such a kind of known as a, a buzzword that just never seems to end. 
So you, you brought up you brought up a really interesting point that I mean you mentioned how like you know Arm has obviously uh, done some work, but you know you mentioned the community, and I think that's the strong point, right? I think uh, you know you guys are a good example of um, community members are actually kind of think take matters in their hands and and actually develop code, right? So I think um, you know the next kind of natural question is what brought you to actually get involved, right? Because I mean, it's one thing to use something, but the next thing is to actually kind of get involved and contribute back, um, you know, work and, and hours and uh, sweat. <laughs> so George, do you want to take that? Yeah. So in the early days, well, you know, in my early days of using embed, uh, I encountered a few bugs every now and then. And I found that the best way to actually get arm to move and fix bugs was to either start and do it yourself or come come to them with a really comprehensive description of how to reproduce it and you know where in the code you see problems or something. And so that's how I started contributing was just, I, I find it easier to convince ARM to work on something if there's already a starting point for them. <laughs> so, and, and that goes for open source as a whole is it's not just ARM contributing to this project now. It's a lot of different, a lot of different contributors from around the world, and so it's much easier for, for you to get a feature in that you want, if you have a starting, if you give them a starting point or like a proof of concept to say, hey guys, this is an idea I have. Here's the starting point, and you're not just you know whining that some feature doesn't exist just yet. So that's that's how I got started contributing to embed and uh, I find it very I find it very fun to work with embed embeds developers from around the world and you know it's um it's a kind of collaboration that makes it very rewarding to contribute to embed so I you briefly touched upon that but I'm sure you had quite a lot of you know challenges in in building building the agro platform but mostly more generally in building solutions around embed and i think we will a, a, a quick chat prior to the uh the live stream and, and you mentioned two theories um one was like you know like the the sort of lower layers around the what happens on the board how do you go beyond the MCU or the SOC. And the other one was sort of above what we have today, the API layer in, in embed. Would, would you be able to comment a little bit about this and uh, what, how you came across those needs and those shortcomings and how you've handled them so far? I'll yeah, so, it, George. so I think that the existing embed examples do a good job of getting you to the point where you can start with a technology or an API that works or that is from embed, like the Bluetooth examples, um, as an example, <laughs> they, they get you started writing and reading characteristics and playing around with it. But I think there's a need um, beyond that for building kind of an application framework that encapsulates best practices for working with Bluetooth and adding certain blocks to your application because one of the challenges that I've faced a lot of times, every time I start a new embed project, you know, it's copying an example or starting with an example and then modifying it to do what I need it to do for that particular application. But every time I run into the same issues I did with the last project. So having like a an application framework that allows you to plug in certain parts of embed, like, oh, I need cellular for this project. Oh, I need Bluetooth, but I also need pairing. You know, there's a lot of code that goes into setting those things up that you have to implement every single time that could just be abstracted away with some framework or that's configurable. Like if you don't need pairing, you can remove that from the configuration and that gets moved out. And that's stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be part of the OS either. Um, so it could potentially be library librarized outside of it. Um, and there's always debate as to what belongs in the OS and what doesn't. But yeah, um, I think that's where the community comes in to really it, and can make a huge difference is starting to, you know, maybe at first it starts out as something that's external and then eventually moves in. 
Yeah, it definitely takes the, the community to, I mean, that's another thing about open sources. It's not just the, the contributors that help, it's the number of eyeballs on the code. The number of people using it help to expose bugs or find patterns that help us create these APIs and create these frameworks that work for the most, for the mm. largest group of people. So like if you're not contributing code, your feedback is still valuable in that like we want to know what are the what are the common challenges you face or what what's something that you always encounter when developing a new embed application that you think could be you know made easier through some framework or an api change or even a new feature so do, do you think is that because contributors are generally experts in the area they're contributing to that we're like skewing, you know, the usage model a little bit towards you know, expert mode as opposed to something that addresses maybe eighty percent of the use cases. You've talked about, yeah, I need pairing. I just want to like maybe you can just have pairing, but don't need to understand like okay, I need to hook up, you know, my security database to the file system and things like that. Um so before embed I came from like I said, an electrical engineering background. And then I worked a lot with Arduino, which I think Arduino does a good job of, you know, uh, capturing the beginner or like hobbyist user market where it, they make things very easy, but then it's also very difficult to change that yeah. code. So I think the reason I, I like embed itself is because it does, I think it does a good job of capturing both the beginner level or like the basic, I want to get started doing this and I don't know much about Bluetooth level or, you know, any other API that embed has. And it also has the flexibility to allow professional users to use it for and configure it exactly how they need, like, you know, with the new, with the relatively new um, bare metal mode, it's possible to build, you know, I've, I've done, embed applications, very, very simple embed applications on um, extremely tiny chips that have like 32K of flash, 16K, 8K of RAM. And I, I don't think, you know, it's, it's not common to be able to do that kind of thing with any other library out there, I think. It's a delicate with balance. It really is. Because I, I remember working with Android and um, I guess knowing what I knew about firmware and the lower level hardware found myself coming across issues with um, for BLE that like getting announcements as to what was going on with BLE and I wasn't getting enough information with it and I started digging and I'm like where is this code what and that helped me really understand there's code even below but below like that the Android API layer I had no access to them so cool. building on top of what George said I think embed really does a good job of abstracting that but not keeping keeping you out of it to the point that you still do have control over your destiny and you can make changes if you need to. And you definitely can give them back as a pull request if it's something that everybody else could use. Yeah, yeah, I think embed, the way it's designed with the, the hardware abstraction layer and then the upper layer C++ APIs makes it very easy for uh, you know beginner or hobbyist users to use it. And then also professional users can go in and change things or add features and mm -hmm. We always welcome pull requests. So, you know, if you add something that you think is useful and high quality, you know, don't uh, don't be scared to submit a pull request. But to answer, I guess, your original question directly, I mean, as a contributor myself, I think I try my best to make things both flexible enough for professional users and then also like at least write documentation well enough and make the APIs straightforward enough that you know, beginner users can use that code as well. And then if you find that it doesn't, that the basic use case doesn't fit your application, you can go ahead and modify it. George, that brings me to actually something uh, interesting, right? Um, around, around something that you said earlier, actually. Um, so I'll share my screen again and uh, I'll tell every, I'll show everyone your, your beautiful uh, name on, <laughs> on GitHub, or actually, oh, sorry, on the forum. Um, oh, yeah. But no, but but I think you mentioned this uh, quickly earlier. 
Um, so we've got this, um, you know, this this forum post where we're asking uh, users to uh, submit their kind of features, new features that they would like to see. And actually, I, I thought this answer that you gave to a user was quite interesting. So, you, you know, there is always a challenge when if you've never contributed before, right? There's a challenge of how do I get started contributing, right? And I think it's one of those things. It's like the writer that has the white page and doesn't you know know how to get started right and or is scared of getting started and i think you know your suggestion here is quite uh, is quite good so I, I wanted you to comment this i think you you slightly you you quickly mentioned it earlier as well but you know i guess i wanted to kind of reiterate this point of you know don't be scared of just kind of get started right or get yeah, started I mean, don't don't be afraid to submit you you can start as small as you want i think my first pr that made it into embed was literally a comment typo change or something <laughs> so or i added like a, a if if uh header protection thing so i started yeah. with documentation i think yeah. so that i probably have like 10 15 different prs for documentation i've actually very little contributed to the os itself uh, uh, from a code standpoint a lot of my contributions to the os are more i guess uh, like architectural comments and uh, things like that. So you can you can start at any level here. If you have a question, if you have a improvement, um, it, it, I think I started kind of really in, I guess they call it stealth mode, just watching and waiting for my confidence to build up to a point where I felt comfortable to actually interact. And you just keep building that confidence up the more you watch. And, and, and once you start contributing, I think the community and, and the employees at ARM, uh, hats off to the way that when when the switch over to GitHub or not, I guess once the source opened up with the way things are run and how open it, it is, um, that's really makes it easier too, because they actually do respond to you. And I remember that first moment of like, wow, they're actually responding to me. They care. <laughs> and, and, and they think that, you know, my contribution is useful and, um, it's, it's fun. It's fun to go through that process of building up your confidence and becoming a community member. Awesome. I think this brings us on. What do you think? This brings us to a good point where we we should have Vincent maybe talk about, um, you know, his his side of the house, right? Like, <laughs> Vincent, you you're the one that responds, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you yes, wanna, uh, yeah. No, I was good. I was keen to like have you maybe, um, you know, talk about what you're working on, um, and and then we can start a conversation. I know that George, you've got a demo around Bluetooth as well, so. Um, yeah, perhaps Vince, do you want to get started with with giving a bit of introduction of what you do? Sure. So uh, I work on on the other side. Uh, so I'm I'm <laughs> leading the connectivity effort on MBOS and um, well, I'm mostly an expert on Bluetooth. And I've been working on embed Bluetooth for the last five years, I think. Um, and to uh, echo what I'm just putting uh, that that down there, exp expert time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, Garrett and uh, Jaws just said, uh, we really uh, welcome uh, any contribution. We know it can be inter intimidating and sometimes um, well, due to how embed is built, uh, uh, you may go through lots of space and l l lots of uh, review when you try to contribute, but we try to be helpful during that process. Um, so it's as easy as possible for you. Um, yeah, I mean, to that point, if you don't mind me interjecting, I, I remember a time interacting with you actually, Vincent. Um, I was doing a PR to embed for Bluetooth. It was the Chainable, Chainable event handler, and for some reason, I couldn't I couldn't figure out what was going wrong with it. And you know, contributing to embed is actually a really great way to interact with developers that may have better or more experience than yourself, and you know, learn from that. And I wanted to say, you know, thank you because you you came back with a very comprehensive response. I'll try and find it real quick. Attainable. While you look for that, um, yeah, I'm going to take a question from the audience. Um, so Carlo is asking, what is the best way to manage dependencies and API changes in professional embed projects? Um, I wonder who wants to take that. I, uh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite <laughs> question. For I've asked go, it. Go for it. <laughs> I've asked it myself uh, many times, and I've spent more time than I and I've said this before. I've spent more time than I care to admit or should admit 
um, trying to solve this problem. Um, someone also actually have to comment on the new tools, but in terms of the old tools, um, I feel your pain. Um, it, it embed CLI and embed sync using the embed sync command and all of that. It, was always a struggle. And the fact that embed CLI was always interfering with my Git commands, I, which I didn't want. Um, and there being no, really the only package management infrastructure was um, basically a, a, a Git hash. Um, it, it was tough. Uh, so honestly, to, <laughs> to answer your question, I never came up with a, a good solution. There were a number of frameworks outside of embed that um, I tried using. Um, but in order to actually better answer this question, I'll hand it over to, I think someone on the ARM team might know better how the new tools are, are handling this, uh, considering the CMake, the changes with CMake and, um, and embed CLI too. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think it's been a challenging point for a while now. And you, if, if you've been with embed for a while, you know, that Try different things, and um, we're we've been revamping the tool. Uh, first, trying to focus on the build system, but the, the sort of like natural next step is okay. How do we solve that memory management problem? Because that's I think uh, actually Garrett. I think when we we're talking the other day, you said this is something along the lines of this is the biggest problem for embed users today, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, quote you too much, but yeah, I think, that, I think it's the single biggest improvement that could be made to the operating system because it is the, it will drive the community, in my opinion, to be more engaged. Um, I use the comparison of npm um, install. If the moment that we're able to do that for embedded is the moment that um, this project will take off, and in just embedded development as a whole will take off because you no longer will have to mess around in CMake or even worse, make um, to, to bring a new module into your project. And then you don't have to go into Eclipse and mess around with the the auto auto make file generation that I'm sure most people on this watching this have, have been through and can take up to three weeks to get your project started. And then every time you want to add a new dependency, it's you know a couple of days. Um, and then managing those dependencies when they start to, um, you know, get improvements or new releases, and it's a nightmare. And it's really what I believe to be the single biggest thing holding back embedded development. Um, and embed has valiantly battled to solve this problem, but it is a yeah. work in progress. I, I think a lot of projects are struggling with that. Um, no, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say that like it's um it's an interesting problem because I think it's a. Uh, it's one of those complex problems that the whole, I think the whole um, uh, embedded development environment, you know, the whole embedded development world would uh, benefit from, right? So it's- uh, You know, I, I think it's coming from some uh, something that came to mind earlier in this conversation was um, more and more, I think web and, and people familiar with web and mobile development are coming to embedded development for especially in the IoT space. And so they're familiar with things like package managers and PIP for Python and NPM for Node and all that stuff. And so there's not been a really great solution for embedded just yet. Um, and I think that's because there's there's a lot of unique challenges for embedded. Um, it especially when you when you're going from something like a scripting language that's dynamically executed to you know, compiled languages like C and C++, it's, it gets a bit more complicated, but um, I think, I think you know, we can definitely take feedback from the community on what, what tools they've used in the past. I think the move to CMake has been a good idea um, just for maintenance sake. And um, yeah, so that that's what I, those are my thoughts on the, Oh, and then the question, what was the question? Uh, there was something on like API management. I think, um, Don, if you can mention some things that came up in the governance meeting about like API longevity and, um, you know, I think Embed's done a pretty good job of deprecating APIs and keeping them 
relevant and warning you when you're using something that's not going to be supported in the future. So from an API standpoint, it, Embed's doing a pretty good job, I think. So but, the, um, yeah. Yeah, the, from from what you've raised, it's yeah, it's not just a it's not just a tooling issue. There is a tooling issue for sure. There's also, I guess, you know, like the what you were touching on, upon this, which is a sort of API API level level compatibility and interaction model. Um, I guess today we don't really have a POSIX for for embedded, and and maybe that's making things a bit more complicated. Um, but I guess on the on the tooling side, I just would want to yeah just call out that yeah we have those new OS tools which are being built. Uh, Built now, and um, I think it's a really good point to to raise those issues with the within the the tools repo. So I don't know if you can uh, put up my my screen, Alessandro. Um, we have that MLS tools repo, and it's uh, I think I know the team is regularly looking at those, those issues and the contribution uh, offers and even and pull requests. Um, so as we're like you know like closing out the work on the on the, on the build system and starting to look at yeah the, those those other issues around package management uh, i think it's it'd be it'd be amazing if we get, could get you know like some real life examples uh, that we should really keep in mind while coming up with the solution for that uh, so it's more like yeah a call out to the community uh, that's we we know that's an issue but it'd be great to get like uh, more more detailed feedback um, and on the yeah on the on the sort of API interfacing um, and or API longevity, it's it's a careful balance, and I think it's not a, a secret that in in, in embed we're, we're trying to come up with a balance between you know innovation and stability, <laughs> and uh, trying to deprecate uh, and retire APIs at the right time without breaking. Um, breaking uh, builds for folks who maybe have a, a, a project they're maintaining, which has sometimes five, 10, 15 years longevity uh, expected is is uh, a careful balance. So I, I can't truly tell more now, but uh, we'll definitely uh, make more, uh, make make some announcements in the, in, in the future uh, around those topics. Cool. Awesome. Um, Don, what, what do you think uh, we should do? We've got a demo to, to, to show. Uh, yeah, I got, think let's go to the... Some more Bluetooth stuff, so up to you. So I think uh, it would be great to move to the, your, your demo, George, and, and, and Vincent, while George is setting up his demo, maybe we can talk a little bit about what you've been uh, starting recently with, with, with your team and, and some key members of the community around, around Bluetooth. And I'll change the battery in my headphones, which I just died. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so earlier, uh, George and um, Garrett mentioned that it's hard to exactly know what should go in POS. And also, uh, they mentioned that they always had to set up the same uh, boilerplate while uh, setting up a uh, a new embed project. Um, while we uh, provide connectivity stacks for our, our users, uh, we, we try to keep the stacks as uh, well as simple and as uh, complete as possible. So any use case can, can be satisfied, and as a result, we try to keep the API software small. And uh, that's something we noticed, but. Often you need a boilerplate to start your 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 ML project, and we came up with the conclusion that maybe we should work with the community to uh, provide this sort of um, common uh, code that is used for many projects, but that won't be for some. Um, for example, if you have a very constrained. Uh, um, project where there's very few uh, uh, flash available, maybe you don't want to use a framework to uh, to achieve your goal. Um, so the idea was to start developing um, well, 
useful code for users outside of embed os uh, and at the same time uh, this will feed into embed os to improve uh, what can be improved at the os level and also uh, get a sense of uh, what matters the most for the community and provide the opportunity for the community to uh, contribute and actively uh, participate in uh, well, extending the operating system for new use cases. Hope it covers everything you wanted done. No, no, uh, that's, uh, that, 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 that's really good. And I think that's maybe one of the, it's kind of a pilot engagement, right, uh, Vincent? I don't think that that type of activity had, had happened before. Uh, and maybe, uh, George, you've been quite involved in, in this uh, uh, on your end. And I think that's a good uh, segue into your demo. And can you um, can you tell us a little bit what how you've uh, how the process has gone for you so far? Yeah, so I mean, the need arose in many of our projects to have like custom services or just more advanced Bluetooth services that just don't exist in embed mainstream right now. And, you know, I, I spoke to Vincent Kubard over email a, a bit and we decided that, you know, right now it's, it's not embed OS is not the best place to put those experimental services just yet. And so what, what he and I came up with eventually was, um, if you can show my screen, Alessandro, we eventually came up with, um, you know, starting this experimental BLE services repository that is currently kind of like a working area for, you know, adding in these extensions. We came up with uh, like how to submit service proposals, you know, issue templates, you know, what kind of Bluetooth services you want to see. We know one of the ones I've been working on lately is there's actually a, you know, whip pull requests in is DFU. Um, so firmware updates over Bluetooth, that's, generic enough to be used on any Bluetooth enabled embed target. And that's something that I've been working on. Um, and I have a working example of it and maybe someday I'll show you, I'll be able to show that, but uh, it's a not, it's not ready for live streaming just yet. Uh, I want to work out some bugs before we encounter it hanging during a live stream. Um, and then, so th this has kind of been a scratch pad for us to, for Vincent, Paul and I to kind of, figure out how we want to ex provide extensions to the base Bluetooth stack support that's in embed OS. Because right now, the examples, that that's kind of what the examples cover. And they I, they just don't go deep enough at this point. And um, they don't provide enough, um, you know, custom services that, are, that a lot of users want to use. For example, you know, like a UART service that works with embeds um, debugging library and such would be nice. That's something I've been working on as well. Um, and we have, you know, another, uh, a variety of other services that have been proposed. And I, I guess to go into the demo that I wanted to do, um, a problem that I often have is, you know, we, we get a customer project and they want to have some sort of Bluetooth interface. And then I have to write up a specification document and then write the code for it. And, you know, it gets to the point where there's all these different sources of truth. And I think something that could be powerful for this use case is also, you know, I find myself copy pasting a lot of the same boilerplate service code. So what I started making to streamline my own development process was this custom um, service class boilerplate generation tool based on a Python library called COG. And so essentially how COG works is you can embed Python code into your, into template files that then generate, um, generate uh, code based on, you, you can just generate whatever code you want. So what I have done in this example is taken, you can now specify like a service specification in JSON, which a lot of embed users will probably be very aware of how to use, hopefully. <laughs> and then you can provide that as an input and it will generate a service based on this service information. It will stub out things like, you know, all the UUIDs you need um, 
and just getting the service initialized. And so this, this is very early at this stage, but I guess I can show you just an example of what kind of service it can generate. Let me change which screen I'm sharing. Okay, can you guys see my terminal? So in this case, I've kind of already run through it, but one of the examples that, or one of the open source um, examples we'll be providing from Embedded Planet is a cellular credentials service that allows you to, you know, configure the service, the credentials used for connecting over cellular, such as like the SIM pin, username, the APN, all those things that are, right now the, the embedded OS example for cellular, it's all hard coded in a JSON file. The purpose of this Bluetooth service would be to provide a way to configure that at runtime, which I think a lot of users, if they don't need it now, they probably want, would benefit from it <laughs> at some point. So what this allows us to do is you can actually we'll do it in here. You can see I specified a cellular credential service. You can provide like a copyright organization that gets put in all the files that are generated. Um, you can specify services, services have UI, UUIDs, and then services have collected a collection of characteristics. And this Right now, it's only used for generating header files and, and code files for the services themselves for embed. But in the future, my goal is to extend this to be able to um, generate boilerplate code for clients on thing, on um, other platforms like iOS I've started playing with, Android, possibly desktop OSs. Um, and also another use case would be generating like a, a latex document or markdown document so that then you can provide that you can use this JSON file as your single source of truth for generating boilerplate code, your documentation, and then provide that to you, you know, your en uh, engineering team or sales team or whoever needs to have access to the code documentation. So I think this is a nice tool that still needs, you know, improvement, but it's a starting point. Eventually, we'll we'd like to have a like a web GUI for creating characteristics and I eventually, like I said, I want to be able to go from like JSON service specification to having like a client on Android that you can just generate and use to as a starting point. It won't take care of all the, you know, application level logic for a service, but it will take care of a lot of the code that is right now kind of a pain to copy this and make sure this is correct every in every single location. So that from I've been working with Bluetooth low energy for a long time, especially on embed. And this is, you know, something I created and wanted to contribute back to embed OS to streamline my own work. So and, and George, is this available uh, for people to to have a play with already on on, the, on GitHub or yep. are you still so oh. if you go to the if you go to the embed OS experimental services, Experimental BLE services repo, you can look in pull requests. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing this window anymore. I will go back to sharing my web browser. So yeah, if you go to Embed OS Experimental BLE services and go to pull requests, you can um, play with the DFU service. Uh, not all the code is here. There's another repository that's like the client I wrote in Python for doing DFU updates. Um, but in the in the coming weeks and months, this will get more attention from me. Um, but right now, I've been working on this. I, I kind of jump around to different projects because I'm always working on something new. Um, but yeah, if if you want to play with this, you can go or you know provide feedback or if you want to extend it yourself, you can go to the Embed OS Experimental BLE Services repo, go to pull requests, and it's number nineteen. And you can pull in my branch, you can clone my branch service dash gen, and that will let you play with this. Um, so yeah, th thanks, George. I think that's like having having done some Bluetooth slow energy uh, development on various platforms. I, I think so. I, I can feel the pain that uh, led <laughs> to you to doing that. So thanks a lot for contributing this. I'm sure this, well, yeah, this will be really useful. Again, the benefit of open source is that 
I don't know who well everyone else uses Bluetooth low energy mm. on embed, but if this doesn't fit your specific use case and you think there's a there's something else you could add to it, um, you're free to do so. Submit a pull request on on my branch. So, I want I wanted to to kick off the next the next part. Uh, so Don, you you said you said you were going to do some announcement, but I wanted to kick that off with one uh, with showing another thing from actually George on 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 uh, on the blog. So I'll uh, let me share my screen one second. Be very quick. Um, so the, we 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 started this uh, uh, Tech forum live stream, kind of like what do you want us to talk about, right? Um, uh, I'll share a link to that as well. But um, what's interesting here is there was a lot of uh, chat about different suggestions, and George, you you made a good point here. Um, you know, the, I think there was a, a bunch of people saying, look, we we would like to see more about um, what you guys are building because uh, you know we've we've started building stuff in the future and then you guys, we've realized that um, you guys were building something as well. And you you, you present here an example exactly about uh, Bluetooth uh, where you started building something and then we built something and you know you would have rather um, build something together, right? And we, we talked about this on the last live, uh, live stream as well. So Don, I think you know, that's a good segue into uh, your announcement. That I think I think we're doing we're we're doing steps in in the right direction. So I, w I want you to like really you know kind of announce the cool things now. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't we didn't make a, a commitment in the last uh, live stream. Like sorry, always a bad idea to make commitments on a live <laughs> on air. We did that, and so we to today we're uh, releasing a, a sort of alpha version of the the the, the Embedos, uh roadmap and so we've published that on github uh it's available now uh you know we've put that in a github project and that's very much of an alpha like uh type of uh drop so these are these are the things we'll be working on in the next sort of three months uh the roadmap itself might uh you know the way it's presented at least might change a little bit we'll probably convert those uh cards those github cards to issues things like that uh, but have a look. Uh, we'll drop a link uh, in the uh, in the stream's description and in the forum. Feel free to ask us any questions about about that roadmap, and uh, and we're happy to to discuss uh, any of those topics, uh, especially if there are things that you're um, that are that matter to you or that you you've started thinking about or working on. Uh, that's a uh, a really good time to, to start engaging about those things. The second thing I wanted to talk about is related to uh, what, uh, what what Vincent mentioned is we've we're going to create some or we've we're creating some working groups around uh, you know like some areas that uh, are driving some interest uh, in the community and uh, I guess the uh, those experimental services. Um, and that, that's repository you know, engagement that yeah, George Vincent have, have, have been uh, mentioning. Uh, that's de facto been that. So we're going to try and you know create some kind of process around this and some some channels uh, for for the community to be able to discuss and contribute and you know think about like not not necessarily just you know land the pull request, but also okay, I'm, I want to. Uh, work on that uh, Bluetooth service. I'll, I'm not really sure where to start or things like that. Uh, so we're going to use the GitHub Teams feature. Uh, so we've created uh, some 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 GitHub Teams. Uh, for instance, you can see that this is the team for that uh, Bluetooth services, experimental Bluetooth services repo. Uh, and you can see that, yeah, George Vincent are already on there. Um, and you can start. Uh, you can we can use those features to the, the GitHub uh, discussions to uh, to engage. Um, we're also starting a so this is one which has de facto already started and you know we're trying to learn as we go. So uh, we we're starting with these channels and we'll try and understand what's what's what are the best ways to engage with the to, to engage and, and communicate in the, in the next couple of months. So any feedback on that is also welcome. Um, 
the other working group we're starting is around support for Nordic platforms. Uh, there's also a teams, uh, a, a GitHub team for that, and feel free to get involved in this if this is something that matters to you. Um, I'm sure you'll have questions around how, how do I propose a working group? How do I start one? Uh, so we've created a form thread and uh, that's probably the best place to, to, to get started. And um, those, those working groups can be quite low touch and quite, you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't need to be able to commit like 20,000 hours of working time to, to, to start one. Uh, but it's more about, can we, could we, when we thought about, okay, can we create some places where folks with similar interests or who are working in the same areas can contribute and discuss? So I guess, you know, to, to kind of um, reiterate one of the earliest points, even if you're scared of like submitting that, you know, button for the pull request, you can still talk to us <laughs> we, or to, to each other, I guess, even um, around specific topics. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about that. Um, I guess we're, we're kind of, we already crossed the hour. So I'm keen to like wrap this up uh, because I'm, I'm sure there's folks that need to move on. Uh, I just wanted to give Garrett and George a, a kind of a last, um, shameless plug uh, <laughs> option here at the end. So if there's anything you wanted to like share uh, with everyone, uh, this is your time. Uh, well, I haven't released it yet, but I'm starting a blog on my on how I'm restoring a classic 1970s motorhome with embed embed enabled electronic systems inside. Wow. It, so. <laughs> Uh, I, I need to find the time to actually write and set up that blog, but it's going to be called the shack on wheels.com. If you want to follow that. Love that. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> awesome. forward to that. Oh yeah. And there's a post about it on the forum already that I designed like a, a digital gauge cluster with um, like little VGL as the graphics library and stuff. And you can get a preview of what I'm going to be covering on the blog there, but one day I will set it up. <laughs> awesome. Garrett? Um, I don't really have much to that. I don't think I'm allowed to plug just yet, but uh, I guess you can keep watch and see awesome. what happens. And um, Stay tuned. Yeah, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn or, or whatever. I guess you, you can find me in the embed GitHub and then on the forums as well, just as Laverty G. Or um, I think I also have another one, which is 40 Grit. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you, uh, the, the three of you, really. Uh, I think it was really, really uh, awesome and inter like very interesting stuff that you've raised. Uh, quite a lot to unpack. Uh, I might rewatch the, the live stream uh, next week and, uh, and follow up on a lot of uh, things we've discussed. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks again to, to the three of you. And uh, um, I guess a uh, happy, happy 2021 and, uh, Alessandro, I'll, I'll see you in a month's time, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be back in one month time. So the second Wednesday of, of every month will be online. So, uh, thank you guys. I, I'm going to just, uh, kind of echo what, what Don said. Thank you, uh, for all our guests. Uh, it was, it was a pleasure and, uh, thanks to all our viewers. We had uh, quite a lot of people today, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, um, this is becoming a forum where we can discuss um, feature, new features, new ideas, uh, and, and also how to talk to each other, right? Because I think that's one of the main things uh, all the, where we're creating all these different channels where uh, we can actually start conversations. Uh, so get involved and uh, don't be scared. <laughs> and see you online. Yep. See you Bye, on everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.